I'm going to play you a uh, few seconds of a video, and I just want to get your attention. I want you to listen. I want you to guess what the video is. Okay? So, what do you do this beside you? Can you discuss what wishes would you like to have? Okay. Seriously? I'd like to be a person. I'd like to be a person. I'd like to change my future so it's not to work tomorrow. Do you really have to work tomorrow? Six hours in a row. Oh, okay, that's your future. Yeah, tomorrow, let's say it's future. Um, I'd like to stay here longer. Yeah. I'd like to add an extra week to the calendar <laughs> so that I could get everything done. Okay. Task wish. That's very true, Daniel. Oh, is okay? A present wish? What were your present wishes? Not to stay in the room. To sit in the room. Yeah. 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 I think all of us. It's still for in November. I walked to work. I walked here today wearing t-shirts. Mm -hmm. This has never happened to me it's in my life. We are lucky that we are lucky. Yeah, you know what we are lucky. Yeah, it's amazing. One of the advantages. Dublin's nice in November. Okay, what about a past wish? I don't know what I should say. Yeah, she's living a glorious day. A future wish? To stay here longer. To stay here longer. To make more money. She is my family. She is all that. Just travel and worry. Of course. Wish would pass tenses by hypothetical means. I wish I could. I wish I could. So the structure I did for this. Once again, I'm going to breeze through this. This. PowerPoint will be on the page next week yeah. with the oh. analysis. So what I did for this was I used a video from Aladdin to activate schemata, to Ooh. access her knowledge. Then the students come up with three wishes, one for the present, past, and future. <coughs> the teacher monitors and sees how successful they were forming this axis. In the so, teacher's so, favor, yeah. Would you say that they had to form a sentence? I asked them to form a full sentence. Yes, yeah, because yeah. we weren't using yeah. the sentence. Exactly, I should, have, I should have explicitly said that. Um, so, 
So yeah, so they, they asked them to form full sentences. In teach phase, I you teach the use of wish to express present desires and past regrets. Now we tend to use hope for future desires. For the strong class, teach the use of as if, though, supposing, etc. So you can have your extra grammar topics prepared for um, in case they're already fluent in using uh, this grammar, these grammatical structures. In the test phase, you can do something like show people in bad situations, and they must come up with wish statements they may say. Okay. Uh, moving on. I'm going to show you a video of a restaurant scene. Okay. Some of you may have seen this before. Do they have? Do you want to happy? No. <laughs> something to the waitress because she doesn't seem very willing to um, <laughs> she doesn't show it speak yeah I, did, I think the waitress comes to get an ask is it okay and they say it's fine <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 like they pretend as if everything is fine yeah, yeah, sometimes yeah. that would be the style like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the cultural difference <laughs> had she been Greek she would have Stand up and say, shut up. <laughs> 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 For everyone. everyone. She would have asked the waitress to just resign. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what do you think is going to happen next? Maybe the woman playing. Or? Or nothing. Or not. Or nothing. 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 Do 
you have acted? Yeah, how would you have acted and how, what would have been an assertive way to act? Uh -huh. How would you have acted assertively if you were to act? This goes. What would you have said? I don't seem like the thing. Can you please be quite smooth with the sign? I would have said that I'm trying to feel something. If your dad's angry, no, I wouldn't be that angry because I were in my class. So I'm used to the kind of job. You're right. Will we talk about complaints here with, with my students? The style here is that you have to express an understanding for the other person's position oh. and then tell them why, what you need them to do. And so you say, uh, you have I know. To tell them what to do first? No, you tell no. them that you understand their huh. their position. Okay. So it's like if you're complaining to the waitress, you have to say, I know you're probably very busy, yeah, but <laughs> we've been waiting a long time for our, for our meal. Um, <laughs> and uh, I don't know to those kids there. So like, nice I know you're probably, you know, uh, having, fun. having fun, oh, but you have to consider. Why would you do that? that? Yeah. It's like this. Yeah. But that's the style here. If you don't well, do that, then you don't get a result. People don't feel obliged to help you. Yeah, because they think, well, this person is just rude, so why should I even do anything for them? Why should have layers and layers and layers? When we want to say directly get to the main yeah. point. So what? <laughs> we can. I, don't think it works. I would have done the same. Oscar. Would but, you just shut up? But, but <laughs> much earlier. It's kind of culture that first. That's why the way you express yourself. I've got to sandwich everything. We have to set up the background. <laughs> shit, the shit sandwich. We have to set up the background so as to shout at you. No, I. So first set up the background. I think yeah. I, w I would have done the same much earlier, and 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 the people would. Wouldn't be offended. Yeah. But because again, it's cultural. I mean, I, I would have never done the same thing. But teenagers everywhere make noise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it has to do with psychology. Like, you messed with me. Okay, that's true. Yes. And, and make the way. The way. As he said. Yeah. I understand your position. I understand. You should be quiet, please. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. That's exactly. What response could you have asked for? Could you be quiet, please? Because mm -hmm. how did he react? It was very stressed, yes. passive aggressive. Yeah. You no, know, he was like very passive and exploded. So he was about to get divorced. He's about to get divorced. <laughs> I'm sure they're probably still together and still complaining about the same thing. Okay, so what other responses could you have given? You could ask the waitress, and would you mind asking those? Would you mind exactly? Yeah. Well, you, would you mind asking? You know, yeah. what else? Could would you tell them to be quieter? Could you tell them to be quieter? Yeah, more quiet. Is it possible if you? No. Not would it be? Yeah, is it possible? Would it be possible? Would it be possible? So yeah, you could actually just say those people are disturbing. No, most people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and be kind of yeah, exactly. interpretation for the waitress. <laughs> Exactly, but we had a question, is it in Greece or is it in the UK? <laughs> you know, but we should be teaching these cultural things. We should be checking the knowledge of this already. Yeah. So with this we can teach functional language. For example, uh, teaching language of dissatisfaction. Uh, you could show a video of a couple complaining in the restaurant. The students come up with what they would say, how they would react. The teacher monitors and focuses on what intonation and functional language they come up with. Then in the teach phase, using the student's sentences, we reformulate them by focusing on the intonation, for example. A focus on the intent that should be stressed. Of course, it's like being direct and indirect. Uh, we can teach more advanced structures, of course, to higher levels. This is good language for a lot of levels. Um, the test phase, we then give the students in pairs or groups of three a certain situation where they may have to be not so direct while complaining, for example. Okay. And so that's teaching functional language. Okay. So now we look at, at teaching accents. Um, uh, some of you may have difficulty understanding this because I have sometimes difficulty understanding these accents. Okay. <laughs> Oh, no, 
voice recognition technology and a lift in Scotland. You ever tried voice recognition technology? No, they don't do Scottish accents. Yeah. I'm open. Could you please repeat that? <laughs> Neutrino. 
Um das Geld. Das ist der biggest thing in the world. Das ist der Penis. Ja, genau. Ja, das ist der Penis. 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 Ja, when I'm teaching from hard tools and super tools, it's uh, called the scale of the universe. Yeah, the scale of the universe. And you literally have what's, what are the biggest and smallest things in our known universe. And it's a really, really good website that you can click on human. I'm going to assume you are a human. I am a human too. Did you know that there are over 7 billion of us? That's a lot. In fact, if you met each person for one second, it would take you about 200 years to meet all of them. Better get started now. Uh, so it's quite interactive. So with this, you can go. Do you want to go see what? So what is bigger than a human? Sorry, what is bigger than a human? What did you What did you come up with? The house. An elephant. Yeah. And smaller than a human. Ant. An ant, for example. And the biggest thing in the universe. Uh, that was tricky. Yeah. A star. A star. Star. Yeah. What is star? It sounds bigger than ours, right. I don't know. It's I'm going to try to test you really on this, don't worry. <coughs> There's no right or wrong answer. And uh, what's the smallest thing in the universe? Neutrino. Neutrino? Smaller, smaller than a neutrino? Nanoparticles. Sorry? Nanoparticles. Nanoparticles, smaller than that. Higgs boson. Okay, let's see what's smaller than a human. So you have a shrew, a worm. Yes. The ants. Let's go smaller. Smaller. DNA. Nucleus. Neutron. Quarks. We go all the way to the very end. <coughs> Don't explode. <laughs> we got string, plank, length, and quantum form. And the biggest thing in the universe? Solar system. Solar system, the sun. The universe. <laughs> the universe itself. <laughs> okay, so we go out, we got human, we got human. Islands, Pluto. So we've got Earth. This one makes me laugh. This is the size of the Minecraft world. <laughs> <laughs> That's Earth. Uh, I'm worried that uh, virtual reality is bigger, a lot bigger than our own. Absolutely crazy. Okay, the biggest thing in the universe is. Oh, is this thing, the Sloan Great Wall. Which is represented by the thick green band is the largest known object in the universe. It is made up of galaxies. It's called a galactic filament. Okay, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> but what mattered was the language that we're trying to get from the student. Uh, so by using this um, a test teach test model, uh, I ask introduction questions to gain a student's interest. Show the video, uh, the scale of the universe, ask the students to pick out certain things they are, are intrigued by. Ask, the que ask questions such as, the human is mm, bigger than the ants. Is the human mm, bigger than the ants? Ask what's missing. Um, uh, the, for the teach phase, teach basic comparative adverbs, much, a lot, to the weaker students. Uh, to the stronger student classes, teach both comparative and superlative adverbs, like bar is nowhere near, etc, etc. Okay? Is, and uh, lastly, test phase, if the students have access to a computer room, they can generate questions using the language just taught from the others to guess. The giant earth room is just about as big as that. So you have to go onto the website and find out what they're referring to. It's another way to use these structures. Um, okay, uh, has anyone seen these images before? No, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay, if you know what these are, uh, please be quiet. With your partner, just can you discuss, what can you see? If you know, be they're... my partner. <laughs> <laughs> okay, they are not just circles. Okay, they're not just circles, okay? 
There's something there, yeah, in 3D form. Oh, 3D form? Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's go. Oh, I see. Oh, I then it it's, it's, is it the yes, bird perspective? It can be a person. It is? Yes. If it's 3D. Oh, and what's the thing? A Mexican. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> you know. No. <laughs> is this is this correct? Is He's imagining. He's right. <laughs> he is right. I can remember something from my childhood. <laughs> yeah, but this, uh, this, what's the difference? Sorry? What's the difference between yeah. the three of I thought yeah. it was a sorcerer. With B, we see the, the I don't know what the last thing is, but that can be a person on top. And probably with B, we see the child. <laughs> okay, the, the first one, what do you think it is? What's A? <laughs> It's a woman. Are you sure about that? Are you sure? So what you said, it's, it wouldn't be a woman wearing a hat. It could be a woman. It could be a woman wearing a hat. You're very, very close. But it's not. You're so close. A Mexican wearing a sombrero. It's a Mexican wearing a sombrero. <laughs> very good, very good. So Mexican wearing a sombrero. Uh, what's the second one? A Mexican wearing a sombrero riding a bike. Riding a bike, very good. <laughs> and he, what's he? He has a sun. What is it? A sun. A mini Mexican. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, so what language could you extract from this? From that might be. Could be, yes. Yeah, deduction. Deduction and speculation. So, um, wow. for example, it has to be, it can be, it looks as if it seems to be, perhaps, I think it's, maybe, it could be, probably, it's, I guess, it's. Um, so, Using these structures uh, with your partners, can you, have you seen these images before? No. 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 Okay. Using this these lang this language, can you try and uh, say what you think these images are? Of course, the first one is the table. I give the answer away. Uh, <laughs> so, with your partners, discuss what you think these images are. Try using the, uh, the target language. Mm. This might be the third one. We're talking about the third one. One, two, three, four. Um, the fourth one could be a toilet. Which direction? A Mexican toilet? The one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One seems to be a door. Yeah. The one with the two things on either side yeah. Yeah. is probably a koala. Yeah. Is it a wall? A koala. What do you think about this one? Which seems like sandwich. Yeah. Yeah. Or, which one? Which one? Because I see more than two. Okay, the second, second part. Yeah. The second picture seems like sandwich. Yeah. 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 Like a, like, or, or a donut. Like a hamburger. A donut. Yeah. 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 Like a hamburger. A frankfurter. We shouldn't talk about that. We talked about the ones that look like food because okay. uh, I <laughs> guess we're a little bit hungry. Okay, second one is a. Mexican on the toilet. A big nose. Uh, okay, so what do you think these images are? Next one. Next one. Car from the left. Next one. A boot from behind. Next one. 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 Uh, next one. It's still a bold person. Mm. From bold man, yeah. It's taken out to myself. Uh -huh. From above. Next one. Door. Koala. Inside. Yeah, it's a door. Next one. Uh, we used to measure with. A ruler. Ruler. Next one's a ring, a rope, a pencil, and. Last one. Laptop. No. Uh, no. It's a elegant. No, a Christmas card from the <laughs> ah. um, So, with this, using these images or any close up images of something, you can test to see uh, the language of speculation or deduction. Um, so, for example, for the test phase, I used, I 
presented the Mexicans and ways of eliciting speculation. They teach the language of speculation in the stage and that they were not familiar with before. Okay, so you elaborate on their already existing knowledge. And then in test phase, using many errors images from five minute activities, that's where I took the previous uh, image, they can use the scaffolded language to say what they think they see or not. For homework, they can take pictures of things in their daily lives, like close ups, and they can bring them back into class the next day, and they can, using the language, say what they think they see in the images. I had them, I had them go around the school taking pictures of things close up, and they had to come back using the language to guess what they see. Um, so, I live in a crazy house with a lot of crazy people. I've got Jack. Uh, and so, okay, so last night uh, this thing happened. Uh, a spaceship crashed into my house. It was terrible, absolutely terrible. Uh, Jack was in the attic, he was doing something. Dad and Sis were in the attic, also doing something. Sam was there, Tess and Karen, Fiona and Jim. The grannies, Fred. Auntie Susie, Uncle David, and Mum, they were all in the house when the alien ship, spaceship crashed. Uh, what your partners can you discuss? What were they doing when the spaceship crashed, please? What were they doing? Um, Where were you? I, I was <laughs> not in the course. So okay. I, was <laughs> the spaceship. Uh, I was flying the spaceship. <laughs> So this yes. is what were they doing when the spaceship crashed, please? Looking at the images. When Tech and I was having a <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jim, yeah. Jim were doing yoga. When he crashed, I was doing yoga. Yes. Yeah, I see that. Is it Tess and Karen were jumping on the trampoline. What was she doing? I'm totally blind. She was in her cat. cooking. Oh, feeding the cat. <laughs> Sorry, my brain. You cannot see the far away. It's gone far away. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he could be the one playing the violin. Yes. When Phil crashed, Phil and she were doing yoga. Uncle David was uh, rushing his teeth. <laughs> Jack was doing a handstand. What was he doing? A handstand. A handstand. Yeah. Okay. What was Jack doing? Looking at the stars. What was Sam doing? Jack was doing it. Hands down. What was Sam doing? Playing darts. Sam was playing darts. What was Mum doing? Feeding the cat. Mum was feeding the cats. Okay, so uh, <laughs> for this, uh, I showed the image uh, and it was used to teach past continuous use with past for example. Uh, the students write or say what was happening when the spaceship landed. So you showed the image. You ask them to say what was happening when the spaceship crashed. What's the spaceship landing? Uh, teach phase. Teach how we use it and when we use it with Quinn and Wild. Uh, for stronger learners, you can teach them how we don't tend to use state verbs in a continuous form and other such examples. If you're going to teach this uh, grammatical structure. For example, John was annoyed when the spaceship landed, not John was being annoyed when the spaceship landed, for example. Uh, test phase then, uh, the students can then create their own crazy house for the others to guess what was going on when the spaceship landed using PowerPoints or even just an A4 sheet of paper. So I just show them, they say, I, mean, I give them all this on a PowerPoint or on a piece of paper, you know, have access to computers and they all create something similar. Okay. Uh, another thing I discovered today is a thing called Magnet Maker. Uh, Magnus Maker is this website. Uh, yeah, it's a great. Okay. So here I've got two uh, sentences. This is, so if you can see, this is the first sentence and this is the second sentence. Can, which of partners can you try putting these in order, please? Uh, so never is the first word here and not is the first word here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, in your groups, can you try to put these in order, please? I think that's okay. I'm Tracy. Um, I'm sorry. Never have I ever been so annoyed in my life. Um, I think that's okay. Okay, so I'm going to put these in order. Okay, so I'm going to put these in order. Number two. No, only then I write, but also read. 
Are they the same? Yeah, they're the same. They're the same. Okay. Just wait, it came out the Okay. So the first one is uh, never, never have have I I been been so annoyed in my life. So oh, there's no effort. annoyed in <coughs> my life. Never in my life. No. Or, and never in my life have I been so annoyed. Exactly. So, we'll keep in the difference. Or, the reason. Just reorder the sentence. And not. Not only. Is this. Um, only can. Be. Great. But also. also but this is just basically a jumble dictation. No. Of no. course, there's a technological to aspect to it. Um, so, I with this. About students or C and B2 students might not come across the version, you give it to them and they go, wait, this doesn't sound right. You know? um, so with this, what I did was, uh, using already made sentences with Magnet Maker, the students unjumble the sentences. Yeah. So they unjumble the sentences, a basic jumble quotation. Um, they list the order of the sentences, the use of auxiliaries and context, what they may be used, etc., for inversion. For stronger students, teach other inversion sentence starters that involve clauses. For example, only by pointing it out to him could he see the answer. And then, as an example, as a test phase, the students create sentences using this inverse sentence starters. They pass them on to their classmates for them to guess what the context of the situation is. Okay, so you're looking at all these things and you're like thinking. Oh, okay. Okay, you're thinking, ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> I don't know, sound cue there, so. so, we don't have time for this. You're like, okay, these are all very good ideas, they're nice ideas, but how do I find them? We don't have time for this. But <clears throat> there's a very quick thing you can do with the testing set button in your classroom if you've got the internet. So, you can use online grammar websites. Simply show them activity, an activity. See how well they perform with this. For example, this was using use to teach uh, adjective adverb collocations. For example, I'm fantastically bad or fantastically terrible at maths. Is it uh, gradable or non gradable? <laughs> uh, it's fantastically bad. It is usually important or usually essential. Essential. So if you give them an exercise like this, you can have them all working together or in your notebooks to see how well they perform at it. Uh, so using the grammar activity provided to see how well they can perform a task. The teach phase, teach the target language and be prepared to teach the stronger students an aspect they didn't know before. The students can then create context where the target language is used or to possibly tie it into the writing. And you can also do like a matching activity that you can find online as well. So these are Things that we have access to if you have a PowerPoint, you can just put them on the board. Test the knowledge, see how well they can do it, and then teach them what they don't know. Okay? Um, that's me. I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah. Any questions? Um, can, yeah, can we have the, the links for, for the things the you links are showed? All, all, they're all in the PowerPoint. All right, cool. Which will be so, provided next week on the... Okay. On the <clears throat> okay, uh, it's been an absolute pleasure, especially to be back in Dublin doing this. This is where I started my type of career eight years ago. And it's an absolute joy to be here. And uh, I hope you've got some good fun this today. Thank you very much. Thank you.